This is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube video about implant dentistry. Welcome back. This is going to be a presentation about a lower bridge implant planning session. We're going to be showing how to plan implants in the lower right quadrant. So you can see here this particular bone model, which is being shown in Nobel Clinician which is a 3D software. You can look at it in a number of different softwares. And what we'll look at is how the bone looks. Now one of the goals is to place these implants in a position that's going to be good for the final prosthesis. So one of the things we like to do is to map out the nerve. This has been done before we are uh, doing this pre uh, pre presentation. And what you'll notice is when I'm mapping this out, I can run back along the channel of the nerve. And, oh, there's a root tip back here. So we're going to have to take care of this root tip when we're doing the implant surgery. So we can have a good look at where this nerve is, but we still don't know where the implant should go based on the prosthetics. So one of the things I like to do is do what's called a smart fusion, which means to bring a scan of the model back into the scan of the patient. So the CT scan gets fused in with the model of the patient, which is scanned on a 2G scanner and when you put these two together it's called a smart fusion and this is, allows us to see where the teeth and the soft tissues are relative to the nerve, the bone and where we're going to place the implants. Now watch this, this is even cooler is we can do a wax up. So this wax up is based on the occlusion of the upper teeth. So now we have all the information that's needed because we know where we want the final teeth to be in this particular arch then we can plan the implants to be exactly where they should go so we can maintain a screw retain position. Now as I click on the ridge the computer is going to generate the ideal length for me based on those two couple clicks that I did. And so as I go through these implants I'm going to choose the replace CC in this particular particular case because I think it's going to be a good bridge implant for me because it has a platform shift and also a 45 degree bevel. So we're going to use the platform shift because we're going to sit on top of the implant to make this a passive fit for the bridge. So we still have that 45 degree bevel which is going to give us a lot of soft tissue cuff which is going to maintain bone. As you look at this particular case you'll notice that the nerve is sitting right underneath here. There's a safety zone around the implant as we rotate around the implant, because we've attached to the implant itself now, we can see the angulation and depth of the implant. Angulation and depth are the key features and words in implant dentistry, and this gets you to nail that exactly where you want to be. Because angulation and depth can be seen, we can move a little bit closer to get a nice position on the implant, so that we're not too close to the adjacent tooth, but also that we're kind of lining up with the particular forces and and uh, how the arch is going to be working as a team. So as we move up and down, it turns from purple to orange in the sleeve. And you'll notice that this is happening because we're getting close to the red line. So the red line is the soft tissue, but also the teeth. So we don't want to be too close to the adjacent tooth, but we can go close to the tissue because we're going to cut this tissue and move it out of the way. This little part that's changing from orange to purple is actually the sleeve that's going to be in the guide and we'll show you that a little bit later but this cannot be too close to the teeth because it just wouldn't fit on the model at that point which means it wouldn't fit into the mouth. Now that I'm feeling comfortable with this anterior implant of this bridge I'm going to start to plan the posterior implant. So the posterior implant what we'll do is attach to the arch and then come back and pick a particular position that we want to place the implant. So it makes it easy. So we can come back and then see the ridge is actually tipping a little bit to the lingual here. So we're going to start to make our implant on a different angle. How would I ever pick this angle in, in, uh, without having this particular view? It would have to be kind of being judged by uh, the model and a uh, whole number of factors. But this allows me to see exactly where I want that angulation to be and also the depth. So look at this. We have the position here. But watch when I turn around this particular implant as I attach to the implant. So I'll attach it um, so you see I'm not on the implant now. But what I'll do is attach it right to the implant like this, click. And then now I'm rotating and looking at the view 
around the implant axis itself. So as I rotate around, I'm looking for that other root tip. You can see it's behind there, but also the nerve position. But see how this implant is actually tipped a little bit distal. So as I start to tip this forward, the forces are going to be coming down the long axis of this particular tooth. And it's also going to be enabling me to be on a little bit uh, uh, different angulation from the anterior implant, which will provide some more stability. So this is going to be a great tool for me to line this up so it's coming out the central fossa, which is where the forces of the upper tooth are going to hit on this particular implant system. So this is biomechanically designed to be successful. And that's the critical component is we need to see where the occlusion is going to be on this case because the teeth are very lingualized in this case. And that's based on the upper occlusion. So unless we're going to change the upper occlusion, then that would be another story. But here we can take the implant, angle it, move it, and then we can have a look at things through making the model translucent. So I click the model and then push the T and it makes the whole model translucent so I can start to see the implants in position relative to the nerve, relative to where I want these forces of this particular bridge. So we're actually kind of planning this almost like an engineering type of firm would. It's planned out so that it's going to be designed for long-term use. So I can take it a little bit further. I'm going to tip this back because I do want it to be kind of even spread back a little bit more to the distal and then move the implant back into the fossa. So this is uh, allowing me to stay away from the nerve and then I'm also going to maintain a certain thickness of soft tissue. I like to try to get about three, three and a half millimeters of soft tissue. Therefore, what I'm going to do is plan my flap based on the soft tissues that are showing, which is the red line above the bone. Because if we took a scan of the model, the scan of the model is going to be superimposed on top of the scan. So this gives us an idea how thick this is. So as we measure this thickness, we can move this implant up and down relative to the thickness of the soft tissues so that I can maintain the bone. But also my flap design is going to be such that I can push the tissue. So I'm going to look at this now. I have about uh, 2.5 millimeters of tissue here which is adequate to buy research. There's research published that shows that this is good. And you can see I can also check on the mesial aspect of this particular implant right here. It's, it's uh, not a bad tissue but I still want to maintain that tissue so I'm not going to punch this tissue. I want to take the, the tissue and kind of envelope it out so that I'm actually going to maintain a thicker tissue by bringing the, the, making the incision right down the mid crestal area of this particular spot right here and by doing so then I'm able to take the two flaps push it out and then get the implant in a position that's going to have a, a better chance of crestal bone staying and having long-term success so you can see it's a pretty cool design uh, now I'll click this translucent model back on so I can now see how everything's going to fit together but look at the angle of the implants how different they are to each other in the past I was trying to plan them so they'd be straight and, and parallel but really they need to be planned so that it's going to withstand the forces of the uh, the forces coming from the upper teeth so this is a, a pretty neat way to, to check this out prior to placing the implants now we have a warning here that shows up in the corner so as I click on the warning you'll see that Oscar is recommending that we use an anchor pin and I agree with this in this particular case when we have a distal extension type of implant placement, we want to make a guide that's going to be stabilized in this quadrant. So by doing an anchor pin, it's going to allow us to maintain the position of the guide during the surgery, which is going to maintain the uh, angulation and depth of the implants. Because if the guide moves, it's going to move the angle of how the implants are going in and also the depth. So by doing an anchor pin like this, I'll show you in a second how the guide's going to be fabricated. This anchor pin is also going to hold the soft tissue, like it'll hold the lip out of position. So once we click uh, create a surgical template, then this anchor pin is going to be incorporated in there along with the sleeves that we created to place the implants. So then you can see here the guide is made um, or designed and then we will have a closer look at it. So the guide is going to be designed so that the anchor pin is going to hold it on that position. So as I'm screwing implants down, it's not going to lift the guide up or turn the guide. So having an anchor pin on this side is, I think, very important. 
So if we take the uh, anchor pin and position it, we can also look at where the final teeth are going to be. You'll see circles over top of the blue teeth now, the wax up. These are the cylinders that are going to guide your drills. So there's sleeves that fit into these cylinders that allow you to stay on track so the sleeves get gradually bigger and bigger and bigger, which incorporates the, the position of the drill and the depth of the drill. So the final sizes are marked on these particular cylinders, but smaller uh, guides will fit into these cylinders, which will enable you to do the surgery. So look at the position of the implants. It's just so phenomenal. And uh, what you'll notice as I turn off this cross-sectional editor, that you can see that the implants are angled in the bone the way that they should be based on the occlusion. But I wouldn't even have thought about the angles being this uh, dramatic on this particular case. But this is how the lingual cusp of the upper molar is going to hit that lower molar. And so it's going to have the design is, is going to be made to have the forces come down the long axis of the particular implant, which is ideal even though we're attaching to other implants. So if we go and grind and move, then this is going to work as a system together. So it's a fan fantastic tool to do this. It's uh, a lot of fun too to design these. So I'm going to send this digital file over the internet uh, via a very secure network to be fabricated using stereolithography at Nobel BioCare. And uh, check back and I'll show you the surgery. You can see how it works out. So this is Dr. Scott McLean and this has been a YouTube video about implant dentistry.